Good day everyone, in this video we're going to talk about writing non-fictional stories. But first, let's talk about what a non-fiction story is. Non-fictional stories are factual stories focused on actual events and people. Also, they may take form of historical accounts, biographies, and other reports on true events. It is worth noting that since non-fictional stories focus on true events, any proof of fabrication of alteration of events may impact the integrity of the writer. As such, it is important that when writing non-fictional stories, we are able to project each particular scene or event as accurately as possible. Now at this point, we're going to talk about the differences between fiction and non-fiction. One of the major characteristics of fiction is that it involves fabricated events. This is because fiction relies heavily on the writer's creativity and imagination in order to come up with meaningful stories. Furthermore, for a writer to be able to come up with meaningful stories in fiction, he must be able to effectively use figurative language and imagery in order to appeal to the reader's senses. On the other hand, nonfiction is based on factual events. As such, it is important that depictions of events need to be as accurate as possible as vivid descriptions of events that had happened are needed in order to establish the integrity of the story and the writer. Now that we have talked about the differences between fiction and nonfiction, we're going to focus on writing nonfiction stories. When a writer wants to write nonfiction stories, it is important that he recognizes three different steps. First, we begin with identifying an inciting event, followed by looking for a story to write, and then proceeding with identifying or recognizing what story to write. First, let's talk about the inciting event. An inciting event refers to a non-fictional event that triggers a person to write. Pretty much this is a scene that a writer wants to share to readers. It is worth noting that when recognizing an inciting event, we have to bear in mind the following questions. First, who was there? Next, what happened? And lastly, where and when was this? Once we're able to answer these questions, we'd be able to recognize or identify an inciting event that we could use as a basis for our nonfiction stories. Let's focus on the first question. When asking who was there, this refers to the individuals or characters involved in the story. Now, it is important to recognize the characters involved in the story as this shows how each individual contributes to the development of the story. With this in mind, when writing about true-to-life persons involved in the story, we must consider the following. First, that they have personal histories. We have to remember that each particular individual has unique personalities and characteristics which are influenced by his or her own backgrounds, experiences, and origins. Also, that they act according to purpose. We have to remember that regardless whether it is a fictional story or a non-fictional story, the actions of the characters are motivated by their purpose. And lastly, that they are consistently who they are. In other words, each particular character is unique and has no similar characteristic with the other persons involved in the story. Now when asking the question what happened, this refers to the scenarios that had transpired and was witnessed by the writer. Pretty much these are the events that the writer finds to be interesting and memorable and as such are worth sharing to other people. When writing nonfiction stories, it is important to recognize the important events as these are considered to be the building blocks of a story. We have to remember that a story is not merely focused on one particular event. Rather, these are a series of events that happen one after the other. With this in mind, it is important that we're able to present the events as properly and as accurately as possible. As such, logical sequence of events is important in order to avoid confusion and maintain consistency and integrity of the story. And lastly, the question where and when was this? tells the readers about the settings of the story. When we talk about the settings of the story, this refers to the place where the story happened and the time when the story happened. When writing stories, it is important to recognize the settings of the story as this makes the event more meaningful to both the writer and the reader. Furthermore, 
This helps establish the authenticity of the story in a way that the writer is able to establish that the events in the story actually happened at a particular place at a particular time. Now, given the fact that we are writing non-fictional stories, it is always important that we're able to maintain accuracy in terms of the details that we're going to include in the story. Now that we know what an inciting event is, the next step in writing non-fiction stories is looking for the story itself. When looking for the story, writers need to remember that each inciting event is memorable. As such, it is the writer's responsibility to present these stories in a way that the readers would find them memorable as well. We have to remember that whenever we write stories, we don't only write stories that are memorable for us, but we also have to present it in a manner that is relatable to the readers. Furthermore, the writers need to view and write about the inciting event using the logic of causality and with conflict in mind. This is because when writing non-fiction stories, an inciting event is considered to be an already complete story, which is part of an even bigger story. When we say that an inciting event is a story already, this means that interpreting the causality in the inciting event may lead to the conclusion that the event is a story already. This means that any inciting event already tells a story in a way that there is a reason or a cause that led to that particular event. An example would be a girl smirking and casting a glaring look at her boyfriend after taking a look at his mobile phone. For this particular example, we have this situation here wherein a girlfriend is looking at her boyfriend in a glaring manner. Of course, that leads us to speculate what are the events that caused this particular moment and of course predict or try to assume what might happen next. When we talk about an event being a part of a bigger story, this means that while events may be viewed as complete stories on their own, often they are memorable because they are part of a larger story. Also, the event may be a part of an obstacle toward a larger outcome or the most pivotal point in a personal story. For example, a couple silently having dinner together in a restaurant. If you would recall the example earlier, we have the couple who seems to be in an argument. While this is already a story on its own, this may be considered as a part of a bigger story because it is actually part of a bigger or larger story. Now, for this particular example, the writer may opt to focus on the bigger picture in which this particular scene would be an event that would lead to a larger outcome in the sense that what would happen or how would this particular couple affect the other people inside the restaurant. Also, the writer may opt to focus on this couple in which this particular scene or event could be considered as the pivotal point in this particular personal story in a way that we as the readers or the audience would be curious enough to ask what might happen next. What would be the events that would happen after this particular scenario? Now that we know what an inciting event is, as well as determining how to look for a story, the next step in writing nonfiction stories is identifying what story to write. Now, it is worth noting that a story is the way that a storyteller or writer decides how to frame a situation. Also, in every story, the writer gets to decide which story will be told and how it gets told. With this in mind, he or she would then decide whether the inciting event is presented as a complete and self-contained story or simply a part of an even larger picture, just like the example we have presented earlier. Also. When identifying or determining what story to write, we have to consider at least two factors. First would be the available material and the point of view. Now when we talk about available material, this refers to the people who are involved, the settings, meaning the time and the place where the particular event happened, and the event itself, meaning the details that led to that particular story. Now, when writing nonfiction stories, it is important to answer this particular question. Why is having a first-hand experience necessary when writing nonfictional stories? It is worth noting that having first-hand experience regarding a particular event enables a writer to recreate a certain scene and interpret it as a complete story. Also, 
Knowing the events that came before and after that event enables the writer to present the situation as part of a larger story. In other words, what we are after is accuracy of details. We have to present the details as accurately as possible in order to establish its authenticity as a story. With this in mind, let's compare these two statements. First, Hey, I saw you at the park yesterday afternoon. You were with someone quite familiar. Next, Hey, I heard someone say that you were dating this person at the park. Based on this example, we could say that the second statement is considered to be somewhat an inaccurate story or a gossip, simply because the speaker is merely relying on the story that is told to him by another person without actually knowing whether this particular event really happened. With this in mind, the first one would seem to be more accurate or a legitimate story because the speaker himself is the one telling or verifying to that person that he saw him in that particular event. Now at this point, we're going to talk about the point of view. When talking about the point of view, we have to consider first who are the ones involved in the story and next, from whose perspective is the story being told. This is important because we have to remember that no two experiences are exactly the same. For example, in a situation wherein a couple is going on a date, Yes, while both of them are in the same situation and both of them are experiencing going on a date, they might have different interpretations of what is going on. As such, the story would have a different meaning based on the perspective of whoever is telling it. It could be a boring story based on the perspective of the woman or a romantic story based on the perspective of the man. Now, in writing nonfiction stories, we have to bear in mind the following. First, having first-hand experience regarding a particular event enables a writer to recreate a certain scene and interpret it as a complete story. Also, knowing the events that came before and after that particular event enables a writer to present the situation as part of a larger story. Next. Familiarity with the feelings towards one of the persons involved greatly influences the story's focus. Also, since a story involves multiple persons, the story may be told based on the point of view of various individuals. As such, the story framework may be affected. And lastly, the one that the writer is most familiar with is most likely the character that is presented in a dynamic way. And the character that you sympathize with would most likely be the story's protagonist considering that the person is telling the story based on his or her point of view. In a nutshell, non-fictional stories always start with recalling an inciting event. Each inciting event may stand alone as a story itself or be told as part of an even larger story. As a writer, it is necessary to pay attention to important details that lay the framework of the story. And lastly, the point of view in a story may affect how the plot or the sequence proceeds.